Coming up today on Studio 13 Live, our friends from the renowned Brown Family Vineyards join us with some delicious wine pairings. Plus, a local style expert joins us to talk about inexpensive ways to get fabulous glowing skin and get that perfect red lip for Valentine's Day for every skin tone. How about some sweets for your sweetie? Hot Cakes is here with some delicious dessert. And our friends from Ba Bar are here to cook up some Vietnamese food and talk about how you can drink wine and help women and children at Mary's Place in the process. Studio 13 Live starts right now. I want to see you smile, take you another mile. Don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait, don't gotta wait today. It's happening all around, like sun shining through the clouds. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make Hey, your day. welcome, and thank you so much for being here with us today. We're so excited to have you. I'm Carly Henderson. And I am Maria Garcia, and it's gonna be a beautifully chaotic day today. Oh, it is. We have so many guests. We are eating so well today. We are <laughs> drinking so well today. I'm very excited. Absolutely. And we are dubbing this our unofficial Galentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, because we're doing all the fun Valentine's Day stuff that you and your friends could do. So giving, giving you some good ideas here. I love it. <laughs> all right. Beyonce continuing to make headlines this week after becoming an all-time Grammy champion on Sunday. She's already also had to add a second show to her concert in Stockholm where, you know, that's the first stop on her upcoming Renaissance World Tour. Those tickets sold out so fast yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so before making her way to the United States in July, the tour kicks off in Sweden in May. And if you're looking to get tickets, you're gonna wanna sign up for the pre-sale. It's important to know that even if you sign up for the pre-sale, the tickets are still available on a first come, first serve Ooh. basis. So pre-sale tickets for the United States are broken up into three groups, A, B, and C. Seattle fits under group B, and the deadline to sign up ends tomorrow. Beyonce will be at Lumen Field on September 13th. This is wild, <sighs> wild. but I mean, how surprising is it after we saw the whole Taylor Swift thing? I really? Know. It did. So I know it sounds like it went a little bit smoother right off the bat. There were no major Ticketmaster crashes or anything like that. I just don't know if I have it in me to fight this fight this time. That's what I'm saying. You know? But I'm glad to see that she like held the option yeah. to add shows. Although, yeah. on, honestly, the only thing that is actually shocking me about all this is that she wouldn't just do all the shows she possibly, possibly could off the top. Like, I know. Of course it was going to be popular. Any, I, mean, I think they would all sell out. It's Beyonce. Hello. Absolutely. Yeah. On to another superstar, Nick Jonas, looking to spread awareness about type 1 diabetes in a new Super Bowl commercial with Dexcom. This small thing is the next big thing. Oh, making it look cool. Good job, <laughs> my man. So during the commercial, he shows us how uh, that blood sugar monitor works. Jonas hopes doing something like this will inspire more than 4 million people with any type of diabetes to, quote, take control. He was actually diagnosed with type 1 at 13 years old. Man, so young. And he's spoken out about uh, this issue many, many times. And I think it's so wonderful to see him saying, like, hey, this is something that a lot of people deal with for many different reasons and we need to talk about it. And actually, uh, you know, earlier in my career, I worked with a photographer who had something like that, like a, a blood sugar monitor. Mm -hmm. And truly, we you get so busy in this industry, just like many others, and he would often get alerts like, hey, uh, you, need a, you need to eat something. Yeah, it's hard to get a meal in sometimes, Absolutely. too. I had no idea this technology existed, at, and so tiny, too. It yeah. just seems really cool. I did look through some of the replies when he tweeted out the video, though, and a lot of people were saying their insurance doesn't cover this, and oh. it's $1,000 out of pocket. So I hope that this will kind of broaden the awareness and maybe make healthcare providers and health insurance companies provide it to people that need it because yeah. that's the, kind of the whole point, right? Exactly. But he definitely added a little swagger to that. <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate that. All right. Is it okay to talk during a movie? Mm. That is a debate that is happening right now. So this viral TikTok post from Swedish pop star Zara Larsson asks, is it acceptable to talk to your friends in the theater during the movie? Larsson says she thinks there's nothing wrong with talking during a movie and that part of the whole enjoyment is to laugh, react, and even analyze the characters while watching it. <laughs> Some comment agree and say if you don't want to hear people talking during a movie you shouldn't go to the theater but others are saying they're not paying all that money just to hear strangers talk the whole time 
Where do you stand in this debate? Uh, well, first of all, movie ticket prices are going up around here. Yeah. So I, I am a don't talk at the movies person. Like, here, and here's the deal, I do talk in my house. Oh, I thought you were gonna say, I talk at the movies, no. but no one else does. Nobody talk over yeah. me. No, yeah. no, in my home, I talk during a movie all the time. But in the theater, I, th I thought it was common knowledge that you, you know, shh. I see, I think it's okay to talk <gasps> during a movie, but quietly, like oh. a whisper to the people around you are saying, I don't get it, or I miss this part, can you explain <laughs> it to me? Because, you know, sometimes you want to discuss it as it's happening, but I have been to movies before where people are getting up and walking around and having full on loud conversations, oh. and I didn't enjoy that very much. Um, I did notice those, uh, some theaters added, it was called a rowdy screening to ma the upcoming Magic Mike movie, or maybe it's oh. already out, but I, I saw that on there and I said, that's the way to do it, you can hoot and holler all together and you okay. know what you're getting into because for certain movies that's really fun I feel like for scary movies too which are, you're not taking that seriously but yeah. it's fun to react to it would be good to, yeah, to know that that was what everyone agreed to together right yes there's and there's fun movies that are super campy that we already do that too yeah. you know so I think yeah. that this is an excellent idea moving forward but it's kind of like the joy of interacting you know what I mean I get mm -hmm. it but mm -hmm. Personally, if I'm at the movie theater, I would prefer it if, you know, there wasn't a lot of chatter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we are all familiar with wedding registries, but now divorce registries are on the rise. Can you believe this? No. Oh my goodness. So a new article from The Cut details this trend. It starts with a, a pair of sisters who developed the Fresh Starts Registry, nice name. They say that they want uh, divorce to be seen as a life change and not a shameful detour. Their registry includes several home bundles to help people who are transitioning into single life. Are we fans? Okay, look, if I gave you a wedding gift, <laughs> I'm not giving you a divorce <laughs> gift. I'm all for celebrating it, okay? I think mm -hmm. it's great. When, when someone tells me they just had a breakup, I don't automatically say, I'm sorry. I say, I'm sorry, or should I say congratulations? Because sometimes you do want to celebrate the fact that that person got out of a bad relationship. Yes. But I also think that people should be getting, I, I don't think like weddings and divorces should be the only thing that people are getting gifts for. I think we should, if we're, I think we should apply it to everybody going through big, amazing life changes, yeah. getting a pet for the first time, getting your dream job, moving across the country. Like there's so many other things other than just marriage or now divorces that we should celebrate. <laughs> it's not just your status, yeah. single or married. And you know what? Not everybody wants to get married. That's true. That is true. And I feel like there's also an importance to celebrating something other than your romantic status, yes. you know, more meaningful things. Uh, but this has been the topic of discussion for ages now. Do you remember Sex and the City, that episode where Carrie was just like done with yeah. all the registries? Yes. So I don't know that Carrie Bradshaw would like. She made her own. <laughs> it was just for nothing, right? It was just my own registry because I'm not getting married, Yeah, right? yeah. I just, some shoes got lost yeah. and she wanted new shoes. <laughs> but like, I don't know that adding more registries is the thing, but I think yeah. it is important to give the people in your life a little something. It doesn't have to be expensive to celebrate something else that's yes. going on in their lives. Yeah. Um, we have a great update to a story that we talked about uh, pretty recently. It turns out even a demon dog <laughs> can find a potential forever home. So we showed you a pic of this dog you're seeing on the screen right now named Ralphie. He'd been returned twice because of his bad behavior. And this New York animal shelter released a brutally honest listing for a 26 pound French bulldog named Ralphie. They described him as a terror, a jerk, a fire breathing demon. <laughs> <laughs> well, good news. Ralphie was adopted. His new owner says that he's actually an angel who's working on improving his behavior every day. We love improvements. Yeah. <laughs> Ralphie. I'm good. This is a happy ending. It happy is. Ending. It is. Yeah. Okay, a new survey is shedding light on how different generations think about their pets. 1,000 dog parents aged 18 to 65 were asked about their approach to pet parenting. And that survey actually found that 49% of baby boomers are more likely to view their dogs as kids, while 34% of Gen Zers think of their pet as a bestie. When it comes to taking care of them, most people spend 50 to $100 a month on food and nutrition, but it's the younger folks that are more likely to get things like pet insurance and even some uh, fashion items. Aww. Yeah. I would say I think of my dog kind of as my child and my mm -hmm. like forever mm -hmm. companion too, who's never gonna really mature past the age of like a two-year-old, right? Exactly, that's, what that's true. Is. I think so. Um, but I just love him so much. I feel like I've appreciated him more and more as the years go on because I've moved so 
many times. That's waffles you see waffles. on the screen. And he he's I've moved so much. He's moved, he's done the Chicago winters, the beautiful Colorado summers there, the Seattle rain, California sunshine. He's been through it all with me. And so I just appreciate and love him so much. And Waffle. I love to spoil him with little massages in the morning. And you both have great hair. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah, you know, pets are so important. And and I to me, I, I definitely see them as kids for sure. Yeah. But they too have moved all over the place with me. And yeah. you know, I told you uh, some time ago, there's uh, my dog Mila and then Ozzy oh. and Olive. And you know, I'd, I'd mentioned to you that uh -huh. uh, two of my cats had passed away and those are the two. And then here is my son Logan with Alice. He is obsessed uh -huh. with her. That's when Logan was a baby. And this is why I see my pets as kids. Like they like hover around Nick, my husband, yeah. all of them. Yeah. So there's no way I could see them any other way, but either way, whether it's besties or like children, the fact that they are a part of our family, I think is really the standout to it's me. It's such an honor, I love it so much. Okay, coming up, we're gonna be chatting with TMZ about what is popping in the world of celebrity news, including a moment from last night's State of the Union address that everybody is talking about. <laughs> but first, our buddy Bill talking about a new play at the Fifth Avenue Theater. Today we have a message from Fifth Avenue Theater inviting you to the production of Into the Woods running February 10th through March 5th. The first in a two show celebration of Sondheim honoring the life and legacy of composer and lyricist Stephen Sondheim. This Tony Award winning Broadway hit and feature film sensation asks the question, what happens after Happily Ever After? Join your favorite fairy tale characters, Little Red, Cinderella, Rapunzel, and Jack and the Beanstalk woven into the story of a baker and his wife, trying to break a witch's curse to achieve the greatest wish, having a child. They quickly realize their stories are too tangled to untie on their own, and they must work together to set everything right in the kingdom. Into the Woods reminds us that only together we can defeat the wolves and giants of the world. With a stunning, unforgettable score featuring No One Is Alone, Children Will Listen, and Giants in the Sky, this iconic show will enchant, entrance, and delight. Tickets are on sale at fifthavenue.org. Get yours today. Now back to the show. Oh, thanks for that, Bill. That sounds like a lot of fun, I mm -hmm. think. All right, it's time to look at what's popping in celebrity news. Yep, and for that, we're bringing in Fabian Garcia from TMZ. Hey, Fabian, how you doing today? Hey, good morning, you guys. How you doing? Good. good. We're excited to have you here. Okay, everyone, congratulating LeBron James. Tell us why. Well, uh, he achieved a massive record last night, a history-making record. Uh, he surpassed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. For the all-time scoring list, uh, I think that the number is 38,388. I might, I might be off by a point or two, but he is now the highest scoring NBA player ever. Uh, he was here in LA playing against the OKC Thunder uh, and everybody in Hollywood, it seemed, was there in the building. Jay-Z was there, Denzel Washington was there, Woody Harrelson was there, LL Cool J was there. In addition to the congratulations he was getting there in person, a lot of other people were flooding uh, online and also in video compilations there was a lot of videos of like rihanna and drake and um every, everybody lil wayne congratulating lebron which obviously speaks to his impact in pop culture he's very well liked the one person that i'm that i haven't seen so far congratulate him or say anything about it is michael jordan which is cool. interesting because uh the goat conversation continues <laughs> is this new achievement does it make him the actual goat compared to jordan i haven't heard a peep from michael jordan at all not in a statement not in video definitely not in person uh and he's probably the one person who lebron might want to hear from but everybody who's anybody was saying congratulations to lebron and rightly so oh i hope they i hope he said it in private that's what i'm Maybe hoping, that's that's that would be nice. that's what I'm hoping for too yes. yeah okay we have to talk about this because there was a moment at last night's state of the union that everyone was talking about yeah it's the kiss scene around the world or at least <laughs> the kiss scene around the country for sure uh we're talking about first lady jill biden locking lips <laughs> with second second gentleman doug emoff who is kamala harris's Husband, it was a little awkward. This was kind of at the beginning when they were all coming in, filing in and taking their seats. Uh, it's a little strange. If you watch the video, we have it on our website. Doug, in my view, at least, he kind of puts his lips out there and it seems like he's just kind of expecting a kiss on the cheek. That's how I perceived it. 
it's actually Jill Biden who goes in for the lip kiss. She says she's the one who spearheads the kiss. And what we're talking about here in our room is, are there political implications for this? Because there's been a lot of chatter in Democratic circles about, oh, should Joe Biden dump Kamala Harris as a running mate if he does, in fact, run again, which is the expectation. There's been a lot of rumblings about that. I think with Jill Biden kissing Doug, <laughs> maybe she was publicly telegraphing, no, we're standing shoulder to shoulder with the Harrises or whatever, uh, and that you know Kamala is still on our side with this. So I don't know. There were, a lot of people are reading into it. Maybe it's just an old person thing. They're both somewhat older. Because <laughs> oh. uh, you know people used to kiss on the lips way back in the day. And it's any, in any case, a little bit weird, but certainly innocent. We know that for a fact. But I mean, none of my parents' friends kiss each other on the lips. I feel like that's just weird, right? I, it is, I'm it, calling it a mistake. It, I'm... It's objectively weird. It might have been a faux pas, but again, no harm, no foul. But yeah. Not really, was, anyway. If it was a mistake, you'd think they would play it off a little bit. They just went. They were like, good to see you. We do this all the time. Oh, I was no. shocked right. when I saw this. Right, I think they, they handled it. They handled it well, all things considered. Yes. <laughs> Fabian, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. We'll Take be giggling easy, guys. about bye this bye. one. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, coming up, a Brown family vineyards joining us in studio. I see them out of the corner of my eye. They're going to share some of their Valentine's Day special wine pairing. Yeah. Plus, hear how they're helping restore Pacific Northwest forests in their project with one tree planted. We'll be right back with that. <laughs> Hello, it is time for Seattle Sips, where we check out the amazing drinks in our area. Yeah, and for Wine Wednesday, we are joined by Andrew and Courtney Brown with Brown Family Vineyards. Hi. Hello. Hello. We were commenting on this giant bottle of wine <laughs> that you brought <laughs> here. How many bottles of wine is in there? You can get four bottles out of that one. Four bottles. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, well, tell us all about Brown Family Vineyards. Well, Brown Family Vineyards, uh, it's, it's in honor of my grandfather, William Bittner Brown. Uh, we're based out of Walla Walla, Washington, uh, but we're all over the state with our tasting rooms. Where are, where are your tasting rooms? Uh, my hometown of Spokane, uh, Walla Walla, and then on this side of the state, we're in uh, Tacoma, Seattle, and brand new location on Main Street in Bellevue. Beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah, so you have some specials for Valentine's Day coming up, so tell us what is included in that. We do. So we have a really fun wine and chocolate pairing is kind of what we're going over right now. Um, and our team can, when you come into a tasting room, our team can come in and walk you through it, kind of educate you on the wines, why we've chosen them with the chocolates and, and have a great little date night pairing. Well, Galentine let's do like some that. ourselves. What pairings did you bring for us to try today? So we have four wines here today, but we're just going to try the three. So we have a Viognier with the white chocolate cayenne and Veracruz orange mm -hmm. uh, chocolate. And we have a Cab Franc with Peruvian dark chocolate and cacao oh nibs. Mm -hmm. And then we have our Red Mountain Forest Project, which is paired with, I'm going to butcher it, so just the Middle Eastern spices. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Awesome. So Cheers. we drink and then try a little piece yeah. of chocolate, is yes. that right? Sure. Okay. So the Viognier, this is... Uh, a, a fantastic Ooh. aromatic wine. Think of like mm -hmm. sliced pears. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I got. It is. Oh my gosh. gosh. It and then we try this with the ch white chocolate here? Absolutely. Mm, it looks like a piece of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. This, is, like, right? this is Courtney's mm -hmm. favorite. So it it's is. got a little cayenne in it mm -hmm. with the with the orange and the white chocolate. That is such good chocolate and such it really good wine. is. Oh, really I love the orange. Me too. Seattle Chocolates does a great job. This is their premium line, J. Coco, and mm -hmm. we partnered with them since the beginning. And not only a great partner, local, uh, but the quality of their product is incredible. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. All right. What is next? It. All right. Well, <laughs> we got to drink I'll it up. I'll finish that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, drink it up. The second one is the Cab Franc. Courtney's going to talk about this one. So the Cab Franc is one of our favorite wines um, year round. It's medium bodied, it's got a little bit of earthiness to it, but it's you're gonna get notes of chocolate and coffee and cherry. Ooh. So we paired that with a Peruvian dark chocolate. To kind of, it's kind of a fudgier mm. chocolate. It's got some cherry notes to it, um, floral notes. And so that'll actually really play off each other really well. Beautiful. Great. Let's yeah, you give think it a of, try. you think of red wine and chocolate. This mm, is yes. a perfect pairing, especially when you taste the chocolate. Mm. Mm. I love it. And I don't know about you, but something about the winter and red wine. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Rainy day. Mm. Mm. When I went to Peru, I took a chocolate making class. This yeah. is bringing me back. Mm. Oh I love that. Goodness. It's like crunchy, beautiful. Oh, that's so good. Now, while we're munching, tell us a little bit about your partnerships with uh, environmental nonprofits. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the last wine we're going to try, mm -hmm. and 
I'll pour that while I'm talking about it. We, we're partnered with One Tree Planted, which is a wonderful organization. And what we've created is that for every bottle of wine that we sell with our forest project, we plant a tree in the forest. Aww. So we know what's been going on with the environment. We see the forest fires, especially in the West. And this is near and dear to our family. I love to go out and fly fish all the time. We've got to be able to maintain our forests. So this seemed like a really simple way to be able to articulate. If you buy a bottle of wine from us, we plant a tree. I love and, that. Uh, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's really, so far we launched this in the fall and we're almost up to 4,000 bottles sold Ooh. in just our tasting rooms. That's 4,000 trees. That's awesome. Yeah. Where do you plant the trees? We plant them, well, Right now, we're focused on where we sell the wine, we will plant the trees. So in okay. the state of Washington, we'll plant in the forests of Washington mm -hmm. State. When we sell in Oregon or California, we'll plant in those places. And we're really targeting uh, places that have been devastated, and we want to get trees back into the environment and back into the forests where uh, we can get them growing again. For sure. Mm -hmm. And That's great. one more fun thing, if you maybe don't want to come in and do the whole wine and chocolate flight, you can come in and buy a bottle of the Red Mountain Forest Project mm -hmm. at, our, at one of our tasting rooms, and then mm -hmm. you can have trees planted in honor of your loved one for Valentine's Day. So that's kind of a that's fun so special. special. As well. Yeah, it's a special it's a great gift. gift. Yeah. Well, Andrew, Courtney, thank you so much thank for you. visiting with us. Yes. Appreciate it. Awesome selection. You can check out Brown, Brown Family Vineyards Tasting Room. I got chocolate in my mouth. <laughs> 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 uh, again, Tacoma, Seattle, Bellevue, Walla Walla, and their Valentine's Day special. We do have a link to that information on our website. Yeah, fox13seattle.com slash Studio 13 Live. I'm gonna finish this chocolate during <laughs> this break. Coming up here on Studio 13 Live, we hope you're ready to say goodbye to chap lips. I am. I oh, know. Stylist Tiffany Colors joining us to talk about simple and inexpensive ways to escape the impact of that cold weather on our skin. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> cold weather in the Pacific Northwest can mean dry skin and chapped lips, which nobody wants. It, it means that for me, girl. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there are just some easy and inexpensive ways to fix that up and get the glow you deserve, which, uh, I, you know, I'm really excited for this segment yeah. for that very reason. <laughs> and, and red lips. Yes. yes. So, so Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to introduce you. This is Tiffany Colors. She's a stylist and she's got all the good makeup tips for us. So first thing to get out of this winter chill is to hydrate our skin. And for $3, you can run over to Target and you can grab yourself some aloe skincare mask. Yeah, yeah you want to hold it up? Yeah, I do want to hold it up. <laughs> I don't have to mess up our makeup, but all you have to do is just clean Boop. your skin, pop that on, and for about 10 minutes, it's going to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. So that way we can kind of glow during this very cold time. Yes. Uh -huh. And then before you go to sleep, you also want to exfoliate your lips. I don't know if we actually ever think about like, oh, I, I never that. do no. that. Mm -hmm. <gasps> but they get chapped and kind of peely. And so for $4, by the chapstick brand, you want to go ahead and grab one of these guys, and you I kind of leave it in the shower. You yeah. can go ahead and oh. rub it all over your lips, leave it on for a few minutes, your lip skin will kind of exfoliate off, and it hydrates with coconut oil. Mm -hmm. So that's your prep before we start talking about how to even glow brighter with a red lip. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we were talking about before is how do I keep my lipstick from bleeding? Because the fear factor yeah. is red lipstick is kind of scary. Yeah. yeah. And we want to make it be easy because it is flirty and it's kind of <laughs> sexy and it's fun. <laughs> and so my trick is you grab yourself some regular old chapstick and a Q-tip. Dip into the chapstick and kind of create a bumper around your lip line. Like oh, on the on outside. outside. On the outside. Oh. So just a little bit on the outside of the lip. You'll roll the chapstick around. It's see-through, so it's not going to show anybody some shine. It's pretty yeah. matte. Okay. And then once you do that, then you can dive deep into your lipsticks. Okay. Now, my favorite, it's by Koki, and this is actually from Bartell Drugs. It's $5.99. And... Something that I forgot to talk about is, do you want a wine red or do you want a true red? Ooh. So the true red is with the lip liner by Koki and then there's a wine, so you get to pick. Do you want a deeper base or you want a brighter base? I'm going brighter. Brighter. Yeah, I'll so, take deeper. A deeper, okay. Yeah. So your first that you want to do is, are you ready? Oh yeah, yeah. let's go. Okay, <laughs> so once we'll pretend that we went ahead and we put our lip liner on or our bumper and then you want to go ahead and you want to do your lip line. Now the thing about this lip line is that you want to get around the lip line and then go ahead and 
go like this. Ooh, and it yeah. goes ahead and it spreads it a little bit. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's lip lined and it's filled already. So you've got awesome. that base. What I love about this is it is waterproof. Are yeah. You ready to turn Your turn, oh, my lady. My yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so, and you. The skin tone too, it doesn't matter. You can pick wine, you can pick true red. It just has to, you have to decide, are you ready to show up in a little bit of bright or you wanna show up with a little bit of a deeper color? So we just lip lined, super easy. You're not having to trace. You just went ahead and you replace it up on top. Yeah. And then I wanna tell you about my favorite vegan mm -hmm. lipstick. It's by e.l.f. Now you had the wine, yes, I so had the you're wine. gonna wear the color Own It, mm -hmm. and you had the True Red, and yep. you're gonna wear the color No Regrets. Perfect. Ooh, so what love I love that. about this is, normally I like to start out with a stain, which I would have you take your finger, press it on, and then go ahead and blend it into your lips, but mm -hmm. I'm just gonna do a solid swipe, just okay. how we just did. Okay. So are you ready for your solid swipe? Yeah, give All it right. to me, girl. It's just lower lip, so solid swipe, and go ahead and press. You guys, look how easy wearing a red lip is. I love it. So you don't have to go in all hard no, either. No, oh, I like I that. think we over th we've yeah. overthought the process. So I'm again, usually much more aggressive when I put on my lipstick. <laughs> so we're just doing a bottom lip swipe. Go ahead and press. It drops it right up. It just does the hard work for you. <laughs> look at now that. You that looks really good. Thank you. And again, that's by e.l.f. And I love it. It's non-toxic. It's vegan. And you guys, it's $10. And now I'm going to jump into my ultimate favorite okay. red. Okay, now okay. this is your truest true red. And if you know me well, you know it's Ruby Woo by MAC. It's a $21 Classic. investment, so you have to have already played a little bit in your $10 Found drug your, source. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Ruby Woo, she's a matte. So again, you're gonna take your chapstick, you're gonna put your bumper on, mm -hmm. and you don't need a lip liner for her. She yeah. sticks around. Are you, is that what you're wearing it right is, now? It is, it is what I wearing, so I already have it on. Yeah. And again, it's just a one swipe down at the bottom of the lip, Press your lips together. You can do a little detail work if you want. Just take the tip and go mm -hmm. ahead and just finish off the cupid's bow up at the top and you'll press it and it's matte. That's another yeah. thing to think about too. You wanna only work with satins or matte red lips. You don't want it to be goopy. Oh, you have okay. to be a professional and have been using red lipstick for many years before you go ahead and do glosses yes. and like goopy shines. Oh, okay, so, so if you're just starting matte. out, yep. don't go super shiny nope. or matte. Nope. Okay, beautiful. That's now I do tip. have a question for okay. you, okay? So uh, I know that sometimes I've heard as you age, as you, your skin gets more mature, you shouldn't use a lip liner. Is that true? You, you want to use a lip liner all the time with a red lip. Okay, okay. Um, if you want to have a softer look, you can always use your lipstick and a Q-tip to kind of do a little bit of a line. You, you're you right, you don't want a hard edge because we do tend to get texture around the lip line. Mm -hmm. And so it can show off a little bit more of like where the creases and the gaps are. But you always can soften your lip liner with a Q-tip. So stay away from sharp edges. So I agree with you. You do yeah. want to kind of stay away from sharp edges, but it, it does act like a bumper. Yep. And it does yes. keep your lipstick lasting longer. Awesome. Beautiful. I feel like I just took a class on how I to know. wear a red lip. Thank you so much, <laughs> Tiffany Colors. Thank you. You're now awesome. Now you're going to glow and have a beautiful frame for your smile. I love yes. it. Thank you so much. And of course, <laughs> you can find a link posted on our website with more information about your fabulous work. So we're Thank very you. excited to share that with people. That is fox13seattle.com slash studio 13 live. Yes. And coming up in just a few minutes, hotcakes is in the house. They're going to be showing us some delightful Valentine's Day dessert, including their dark decadence molten cake. I'm all about it, baby. Let's go. I wanna see you smile. Hello, Valentine's Day is right around the corner and what better way to celebrate than when some sweet treats for your sweeties or just for you. Oh, yeah. Thanks, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're joined by Brittany Barnaliban with Hot Cakes. I cannot wait for this segment. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, so you started at the Seattle Farmer's Market and you've kind of blown up from there. Tell us about your journey. Yeah, Hot Cakes was launched in 2008 at the Seattle Farmer's Markets with our signature uh, Take and bake, which is molten chocolate cake batter in a mm -hmm. jar where you just take it home and bake it yourself. Yeah. Uh, and then we launched our flag sh flagship location in Ballard a few years later, and then our Capitol Hill location. We are a full on dessert restaurant, so it's not just molten cakes. We've got cookies, cocktails, milkshakes, anything a sweet tooth needs. Oh, yeah. Now, you do work with uh, some vendors that help you get that high quality ingredient. Yes. Talk to me about that. So I would say our first partnership to be mentioned would be Theo Chocolate, mm -hmm. um, local company right in the Fremont neighborhood. Super delicious stuff. Organic, fair trade, first uh, certified fair trade 
company in North America, chocolate wow. company. So yeah, really love working with them. Um, really, our eggs, our chocolate, and our sugar. That's the and that's what makes up our molten cake. So we uh, work with Wilcox Eggs, which is local, the Nisqually River, um, organic, all that, and then um, wholesome brand organic cane sugar. So Wonderful. it's just, uh, as well as salt, it's just four ingredients in this I love amazing it. cake. Well, so. I can't wait any longer. Yeah, what are we dishing up today? Yeah, let's get into it. So this is our classic dark decadence cake. These are baked to order when you come into the shop. Um, they're served with our dry burned Pacific sea salt caramel sauce. Ooh. These are made in small batches by our sauce maker, the old school way in a copper kettle. Oh. And when I say, say dry burned, uh, typically caramel sauce is made by adding sugar and water to a pot and letting the heat do the thing. But dry burned means you add just the sugar to a hot pot and let it burn, basically. Oh. So you get a richer, smokier, Look at how more true caramel looks. flavor. Uh, we also partner up with Bluebird Ice Cream, another local company. Small batch, really delicious organic ingredients uh, for our vanilla bean ice cream. And then this is our uh, cocoa nib toffee. Um, all of the, oh, please, Should yeah. we go ice cream, cream and then wanna... chocolate? Well, or... what I like to do is get a bit of the cake and then drag it through the Ooh, ice cream and sauce. Okay. And like a bite idea. of everything <gasps> on Beautiful. The spoon. Ooh, I like that, like, lava. crunch when you go yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it should be Ooh. nice and gooey in the center. Yeah. Our sounds were Look at that gooey oh, spoon. I, I love it. Mm. <laughs> so yummy. I gotta get some mm. caramel in there. And is this how you serve it? At it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have several varieties of our, our molten cake. We've got peanut butter, strawberry, we've got a S'mores version, so it's got some that smoky. Is so oh my gosh, going on. I'm going round two. <laughs> <laughs> so so this dark decadence cake, this is the cake that launched it all. Mm -hmm. um, this is what you would receive if you come into our shops. However, Valentine's Day coming up, maybe you want to have a date night at home. Yeah, uh, just we've got you covered. This can be recreated at home in the form of our take and bake cakes. Right here. Yeah, uh, I, I brought a few. We've got a couple other varieties I didn't bring, but we have. A vegan version, which is actually oh, my favorite. Yeah. It's really, really good, and I'm not vegan. Yeah. I feel like uh, it's always extra chocolatey yes, somehow. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've also got a line of sauces, so you can get our Pacific sea salt caramel. We've also got dark chocolate sauce. We have a vegan caramel sauce, mm, as well beautiful. as the cocoa nib toffee, so yeah. And you have a cocktail that you're yes, going to make for yeah, us Yeah, so well. this is our valent. Well, we'll be running this cocktail for the month, but this is a sour cherry highball. Mm -hmm. So what I have here is just some sour cherry juice and a little vanilla bean simple syrup, because that's our Ooh. cherry juice is really actually quite tart. Um, we got some cherry bitters just Ooh. to sort of amplify that cherry flavor. Just gonna do a little, little, little shake of that. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing this with, with uh, old Overholt rye whiskey, which Yum. rye whiskey and cherry together is just delicious. so delicious. Mm -hmm. So I like to do equal parts of the simple syrup and sour cherry juice to the old Overholt. I like it boozy. Yeah. yeah. Do this. Let's do this, right? <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna shake that up, try not to mm -hmm. spill it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we've got this beautiful, vibrant <laughs> red cocktail, which you would think would be quite sweet, but it's actually not too bad. It okay. smells um, so good. Yeah, it does. We've got these Tillin natural maraschino cherries, so. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then oh, we're just gonna top oh. this off a little fizz. A, a little, little fizz, yeah. exactly, yeah. makes it even more drinkable. They go yes. so smooth. This looks so that good. That is so good. Now, while we're trying it, tell us a little bit about the nonprofits that you partner with. We do only yeah. have 30 seconds. Okay, all yeah. right, let me get that yeah. in a quick sound. Cheers. 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 Uh, we work with Washington Wild, uh, mm -hmm. advocates for wild farmlands in, uh, in Washington State. Um, we also partner up with Dog Gone Seattle. Uh, we host uh, dog adoptions annually yeah. every year. Uh, we're getting ready to work closely with the Dur Girl Scouts of Western Washington, which is an organization that I hold very dear to yes. my heart. So I was a Girl cool. Scout. Yay! Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a good cocktail. Thank you. Oh, I love you so this. Much. And we didn't get to try the cookies, but I have to tell you, I've been in there. I've been in your store yeah. before, and I can vouch they have amazing cookies. So I'm gonna have that during the break. <laughs> Brittany, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, make sure to stop into Hot Cakes in Ballard and Capitol Hill. We've got all the info up on our website. Fox13Seattle.com slash Studio 13 Live. And be sure to stick around here mm -hmm. on Studio 13 Live because coming up we have the owners of Bob Bar joining us. Yeah, he's going to show us some amazing Vietnamese comfort food. But next he'll be sharing all the details about a new wine that doubles as a fundraiser to help kids in need. We'll be right back. Take you another mile. 
It is time for Emerald Eats, where we get to highlight amazing food in our area. And today we are actually joined by Eric Vaughn with Bob Bar in Seattle, who is here to talk about a very special partnership benefiting the community. Welcome to you. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, be, us being here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you asking about the uh, community partnership. Yes. We, we have a Bob Bar South Lake Union nearby Mary's Place. Mm -hmm. I believe they house only about two blocks away. So it's always on my mind and it's very touching to hear this organization really support the woman and make sure no child sleep outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. And why would it so important? Because us, all the Vietnamese came here is refugee of both people during the uh, late 70s. Mm -hmm. And our family was one of them. And so I always remember the time when nobody knows who we are and they came and give us food. So now we in the position and feel blessed to be able to give back to the one that needed more. And you're paying it forward with David Hill Winery. Tell us all about that. Yes, uh, our, our friend uh, David Swanker owns uh, Vin to You. He used to work with us at uh, Monsoon in Bellevue there, and uh, he now he owns Vin to You. And he said, "Hey, Eric, are you guys interested in doing a um, Saigon sibling lab wine label, which include Monsoon and Babar?" And I said, "You know what, Eric." why don't we do it and give ten dollar per bottle to mary's wow. place oh, and we're gonna because. we're gonna do 50 cases and so we're able to donate close to ten thousand dollars to mary's place and hopefully this gain a lot of traction and then we will continue to do this wonderful work for a yeah. Of years. yeah yeah it's wonderful yeah. work now are we going to get a chance to try it's already uh, open it's for already you. It's already ready. <laughs> hey, here Beautiful. we go. I'm going to try uh, some of the beer now. Do you sell this at your establishment? Uh, yes. Um, we, we, have, we have Maritime Brewery, which is located in Ballard. Okay. And Maritime's Brewery has been around for a long time, mm. since the uh, late 80s. When I first came to Seattle, 1997, and that's one of the first winery that I came to taste. And then, matter of fact, when Monsoon opened in 1999, we were selling maritime beer over there. Oh, that's so, so great. So we, uh, we did the flavor profile, and um, so Bill was nice enough to make to craft this beer specifically for our cuisine. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So how long is this going to be going on for and where can people get all the wine? Uh, the, this beer, mm -hmm. you can get it all at Bar Bar locations mm -hmm. and Monsoon and then these wine uh, effective, I believe, today. That's <laughs> uh, incredible. Yesterday. You can buy it at uh, any of our restaurant and uh, like I said, $10 will be donated <gasps> to that's such a good cause. Mary's Place. It must feel so good to be in a position where you can give back to people now, too, oh, you know? Every month, Bob R., we have a community partner, and we give one, one, once a month, 10% of our proceeds go to that organization. Yeah. Every month. Well, don't go anywhere. You want to stick with us for okay. the next block, okay? Yes. So you're going to be coming back after the break. You're going to be cooking up some good eats. Yay. And I've tried your food before, and it is fantastic. She's a big so fan. I can't wait. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, we are back with Aaron Bond from Bob Bar in Seattle. And he actually just got done telling us about an incredible partnership between Bob Bar, David Hill Wine, and Mary's Place. Yes, and you're going to get to cooking something for us today. What are you making? We're making lemongrass rockfish uh, with a little bit of turmeric. It's a very classic uh, southern Vietnamese. Yeah. And I want to share this with the uh, Seattle community because it's so simple to make. Great. And we also have recipe to share with everyone. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. So, uh, rockfish is abundance, and they were, believe it or not, cheap. I use the word cheap. Yeah. Uh, back 20 years ago, 15 years ago, nobody used rockfish because uh, halibut was still affordable along with black cod and salmon. Now, those things have skyrocketed. Yeah. So, yes. lots of restaurants, good chefs gravitate toward rockfish because it's local and sustainable. Beautiful, and let's okay. get to cooking. So I'm gonna sear uh, this. Ooh, it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> this 
Beautiful. And what's on the fish there? We have uh, fresh lemongrass. Mm -hmm. And make sure when you do a cut, cut at home, use these portion, center portion only because that the end, bit. yes, the, the top doesn't have that much flavor ah. and the ends is really uh, Ooh, stringy and sturdy. Good. Okay. okay. Yeah. And this, believe it or not, it should take no more than five minutes to sear. Okay. Beautiful. Great. What is it breaded with? It breaded with uh, fresh lemongrass, uh -huh. a little bit of fresh turmeric. You can find it even okay. at Safeway now. Mm -hmm. 20 years yes. ago when it first came to the, the city or mm -hmm. 25 years ago, couldn't find lemongrass or turmeric. Mm -hmm. Now it's everywhere. That's that orange. And then, yes, color. and then you yeah. have turmeric powder, uh, garlic powder, along with white pepper. Yeah, uh, that's great. Right I know turmeric's powder. super good for anti-inflammatory. Uh, absolutely, yeah. you got it. Yeah. I've always been really intimidated by lemongrass. I'll be honest with you. I love the taste of it whenever I go to a restaurant, but I've never bought it myself. Although I'm kind of the color of it today, yeah, aren't yeah. I? Yeah. Let, let, me, a little let bit. me show everyone how to do it. It's okay. that simple, okay? As I said, you can use this portion for soup or stock. Boil it, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, mm -hmm. and then... Beautiful, okay. And we're chopping it in the little pieces. And then, yes, that's it. Yeah? yeah? That's it. That's it? So you can make all the mixture ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the two fresh ingredients, which is fresh turmeric and lemongrass, then you can do the end. That's so it good. should take you this dinner at night, should take you no more than 20 minutes. Ooh, oh, I love that's that. It. You're speaking our language. Yes. Yes. I'm and so then tired when I get home. Cabbage are abundance in Washington. Yes. Yeah. And the mint as well. So you can pre make this and then soak it in water, rinse rinse it dry, refrigerate it, stay in there for three days. I love it. And Beautiful. you're really selective with your ingredients, Absolutely. right? Talk to us about that. We we uh, we buy our beef from Pure Country Farm, mm -hmm. which is in uh, Moses Lake. Mm -hmm. And now Flipping the fish. Look at that. Look at that. Crispy. So, so far, I promise you that was only about two minutes. Yeah. And now you can literally lower it or uh -huh. even turn off the heat, walk away, do something else, and it should cook by itself. Beautiful. It's that simple. Yeah. And that's why thin fish, believe it or not, is inexpensive because the less fat the fish, the less expensive. But In still this delicious. case, this flavor pair perfectly well with less fatty fish. And I noticed you brought a little tofu for me here too. What's the trick to making tofu taste really good? You need spice and uh, salt. Okay. Beautiful. And garlic. Good and seasoning. those components. Yeah. All yes. the good seasoning. Yes. So you can use the same recipe for pork, chicken, fish, tofu. So versatile. Yes. I love uh, it. Yeah, and I think the turmeric, yeah, like you said earlier, it's really good for inflammatory mm -hmm. and at the yeah. same time, beautiful color. Mm -hmm. And you know, we always love to remind people that you can find these recipes on our website. And it was something that was very important for you to share because we really want people cooking that good food and cooking it quickly, which you're a master of, of course. No gatekeeping. He's yeah. giving away the secrets here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no secret but at we all. Should, so but simple. also definitely go in and have him cook it for you because yes. I've been to Bob Bar before and it is fantastic. Beautiful. I can vouch for your rice for Michelle. Salad. Uh, where else can people come and find you? Uh, we, we, monsoon as well. Yes. So we have three bar bar at U Village, very swanky, mm -hmm. as you know, a beautiful uh, village there. And then uh, South Lake Union, which yep. is only blocks from here. Mm -hmm. And the original ones uh, on Capitol Hill, right across the street from Seattle U. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Monsoon's been around for 24 years. Wow. Next year we will have 25th. That's a oh, huge accomplishment. That's exciting. Yes. It's hard. It really it's hard is. out there. Yeah, it's, all right. Ooh, I'm going to try some of this while you plate this brand new plate. And you can try the I'm tofu. Try the tofu. And I love how balanced this looks. I mean, we got a little rice, we got a little fish in a salad. Mmm. Mm. Mm. That is so good. Mm. See how fast that was? Look yeah. at that. I is love that how it's. Um, Mm. Served on a leaf, and too. And then uh, the oil, the leftover oil, mm -hmm. sh you shouldn't discard it. You, you can put it on noodle. If you Ooh. if you like pasta, put yeah. it. Yeah. These are. Extra flavor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Flavor oil. 
so delicious. Try, really, try the, let's uh, see. Let's the try fresh it. One. Very, very warm. Okay. Is it? Ooh, ooh, and soft. Okay. Yeah. I need to take your tips on making tofu. Mm. Yes. This is amazing. Oh my goodness. Mm. Is that good? Yeah. So this one's good, but right off the grill. It's mm -hmm. another level. Mm, it's another level. Yeah. You see that salt? Yeah. That so salt. good. Yeah. Delicious. Nice and salty and. Oh my um, gosh. There was a little, but what? Yeah. So I you mean, were asking what? Uh, first of all, you need to buy good tofu. Okay. That mm -hmm. mean, um, buy the organic one. Believe okay. Believe not, um, because all these non-GMO, it does give better flavor. Okay. And when people classify that, mm -hmm. they have less water mm. ratio compared to soy milk. Okay. And that's good why tip. it tastes good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I hear there's some kind of surprise we happening have. here. Oh, we have no idea what this yes. is. Come on in here. Our patient what chef, Rosalie. Oh. It's a beautiful, beautiful cake. cake. What kind of cake is this? It's called pandan. Uh -huh. We call it passion pandan barbar cake. Oh and my then gosh. right there, the yellow. Uh, Should we take here? a bite? I hate to ruin it, but I'm oh, That's a passion a fruit, and the white portion uh, cream is mm. coconut. So it's very mm. tropical theme. And Best the day ever. Mm. <laughs> and we don't make, we only make really good. Uh -huh. on the weekends. Oh, Thank you yeah. so much for coming in today. Yeah. We'll be back one, tomorrow. Everybody. Thank Mwah. you. <laughs> <laughs>